Hello everyone, my name is Lothorn and welcome to How to Vampirism, the mod all about vampires and their hunters. Anyways, no one cares about those, let's get to it. So, to get started, like any good mod, this one requires a little bit of crafting. You take yourself a book and some vampire fangs, and you can get the vampirism guide. You might also start with this book in your inventory, not 100% certain about that. Now, if you want to get vampirism fangs, go find yourself a vampire, murder him, he might drop fangs. Alternatively, you can find the fangs in some villages, in some chests, or trading with a few different types of villagers. Now, to get started on your journey, after you have the book and you look through it and it gives you all the instructions you need, but if you like video forms better, to get started, simply take some vampire fangs and stab yourself with them, and you will get Signira Vampirism. And this is how you start out Vampirism. As I said, you can get this fang by killing one of these vampire fellows, or you can also get this disease here by standing and letting him sneak up behind you and bite you on the neck. Either way, it will work out for you eventually, and you can start your journey of vampirism. It does take a good amount of time though for the vampirism thingy madiggy to get completed, so we are going to just wait until then. Alright, and with that, we've become a vampire. So you may notice that there are some physical changes to the character's portrait, as well as this yellow light coming around the screen. That happens when you're a weak vampire and it's daytime. And as for the safe thing, there is commands in vampirism, uh, thankfully, for changing the fangs and eyes so they don't look like, like that if you don't like them. So we go fang, then we can, I think, change their position like that. Okay, yep. So you can get rid of things, you can choose their types. Same with the eyes. There's a bunch of different eyes. And so we can change our eyes like that. So yeah, you can change your eyes around with those commands. So your character model doesn't look as silly as they do. Once you're a vampire, you'll also notice that you no longer eat food. Instead, lower down, you have these little blood drops and you have more health. Now I'm going to turn the game off peaceful mode from what I said, set to, and we're going to move on to how you get all the leveling and do all that stuff with vampirism. Uh, first, something I should cover is how a vampire actually eats food and also that they're weak to water. So if you go into water, you will gain the status effect weakness. And to get food now, you must go to a target and you'll see these fangs. You will have a hot key set. The base one is V. Press that and you'll start biting the target and you'll drain them of their blood. And you can see they slowly drain down how much blood they have. And if you fully drain a target, it will either die or become a vampiric target. This one died here though. Uh, so that is the basics of vampirism started with what level one vampire gives you. Now, how to move on in levels in vampirism requires a few things. The first of those things will be glass bottles. You will need copious amounts of glass bottles, so we're going to grab those right now. All right, now that we got the bottles, the next thing you need is this over here. It's very simple to make. It needs iron, glass, and a bottle. And that is this thing right here. We'll just punch it off. The altar of inspiration. I have quite a few of them lying about now. So this is the very first thing you do to level up as a vampire. Now I will note that the little yellow glowiness around the screen is quite annoying. There is several mods for you to deal with that. So there is the Paracel mod, which instead of having a little annoying gl glowing thing above Around your screen, you can hold the item in your offhand. And there's also an umbrella mod, which just means you hold the item. Um, both of them have their drawbacks. You can also go into the configs and change it so you don't get the yellowness around the screen. Or you can keep it there because it's not all that impactful. Right. So this little altar of inspiration requires to be filled with blood. Now to get filled with blood, you need to get blood bottles. Now blood bottle, is filled by biting a target 
when your inventory is, not your inventory, when your blood gauge is full, so you're a fully fed vampire, and then you can start putting that blood into the blood bottles. And you can go around to various different victims to collect it, although chickens just die instantly from bites, so don't bother with them. Might be a good idea to get yourself a cow farm. They actually have a fairly large amount of blood, and so that's a good way to do it. Because as you can see, this requires a copious amount of blood to get into it. So a cow farm might be a good investment. Now, one of the problems with blood balls, as you can see, is my inventory is actually filled up. And that is because the when you're filling them, they have to be in your hot bar. Otherwise, they do this weird thing where it decides to reprioritize them and not fill them up. Also, they don't stack. Anyways, when they're in this state, they are rather difficult to work with. But if you have a whole bunch of them partly filled in your inventory, your hot bar here, and you go nibble on a villagers, then you can get yourself a good amount of blood filling up your bottles. Still, it will take some time. And once you have your altar full enough, if it is night, you can right click on it and it will level you up with a lightning strike. When you level up in Vampirism, it will open up the skill tree, which will let you unlock new skills. The first ones are a bit locked in their path, but once you move on from that, you will get more and more powerful. Now it's not filled with enough blood. Another thing to note is vampires have night vision. So you have night vision, there is a way to toggle it on and off, you can find that in the hotkeys. Let's move on then to the crafting of more things in this mod. Right, so next we will move on to the coffin, over here. Very straightforward to build, and this is your new bed. The coffin has a special feature that it lets you sleep during the night. I mean, during the day. This will not actually stop you though from sleeping in a normal bed. So for some weird reason, you want to spam sleep a whole bunch, you can switch back and forth between the two. Now, another feature of being a vampire is you will no longer get attacked by zombies. Phantoms is apparently a different matter though. Now, at a certain point, you'll start unlocking powers. Powers can be accessed by hitting the power hotkey, which will open up the power bar and then you can select one to use. The first one is regeneration, so you just hit it and it'll use a bit of blood, it has a cooldown, and then you can access it. Now, using altars to level up can only get you to level six. After that, altars are no longer useful for leveling. At a certain point, the trees will also split, going down different paths. These will give you different options, and it's really up to you to choose what to do with these paths. Now, personally, I think that the jump bonus is amazing, and same with Vampiric Rage. Also, the Advanced Biter is quite good. After that, it's kind of up to your own preference. The teleportation is okay, and the other things, well, I don't really even know about, so. They're, they're so so. Uh, and the Swarm of Bats can be quite fun. Now, Bat Mode can actually turn you into a bat, and then you can fly around, so it's a great way to travel, if you like that. You can turn back and forth. It only works during the day, though. I mean, at night, though, so you can't do it during the day. Next, let's get on to actually how you start leveling up after level six, because there is a way to do it. However, you will require a lot of iron, and I mean a lot. Also, a good amount of stone. You will need to build yourself four of these things to begin with, and then two more later. These lovely little pointy nipple things here. You will also need to get yourself some stone and build these altar pillars. You'll need 12 to begin with, and then you'll need to get an additional six later. Finally, you will need to get yourself some obsidian gold and build yourself the altar of infusion. When you have all of these things gathered together, you combine their powers and you create this thing. Then you will see the altars will get placed down like that. You take stone bricks, you fill it in by putting it on the bottom of the thing, or the top. Not right-clicking randomly around it, you won't actually be able to put it down, you'll get some weird result like that. Now once you've done that, you will have the altar of infusing, and this is how you start your leveling up process. 
So I'm level six. So this is a structure that you use to get to level five. However, apparently we advance beyond that, which is a little strange and shouldn't happen. So we are at level six, which requires you now to have a lot of iron blocks. Each one of these here is an iron block. And then to level up, it requires a few more finicky things than you would usually like. Now you need pure blood, human hearts, and vampire books. Now these objects are a little difficult to get. To get hearts, you can either trade with vampirized villagers that do trading, or you can kill vampire hunters and get hearts off them. Vampire hunters will randomly spawn around the map and you'll also find their camps where to kill them at. Don't destroy the campsites though, because they will keep spawning from there so you can farm hearts off them. Pure blood is gotten by killing vampire barons, which are a mini boss creature that can be found in a vampire forest. Vampiric books, unfortunately, have to be found in dungeon chests and are quite hard to find. Honestly, I'd recommend just spawning them in because they are so ridiculously hard to find. But if you want to play it legitimately, you can suffer and go look around for them. The only way to get them is via dungeons. We're going to go to a vampire forest now to look for a baron and show off what they are. They only come out at night though, so we're going to have to sleep. Now this here is a vampire forest, and right away you can already see two vampire barons going at it. Level 1 and level 4, they are fighting for a bit, now they're just staring at each other. You kill these guys, and they are quite strong to get vampire pure blood. Also, if you are not a vampire, and you're in this forest, it's an excellent place to go vampire hunting, but there's also a lot of vampires here to mug you. Now these barons are actually quite strong, but they do drop the goods you need to start leveling. Now each one has different levels, so this one that has just died was a level 1, so it's level 1 purity. Whereas if we are to kill this one, he will drop us level 4 purity. However, as you can see, he is ridiculously tough, so you will need to get quite prepared to kill him, and possibly use your own vampiric powers, like vampiric rage, to kill him, which makes you deal extra bonus damage, and will give you a more pure blood. That is how you get pure blood. Vampire hunters will be armed with stakes and be ready to kill vampires they come across, but killing them, human hearts, which you can eat or use for the vampire leveling up. Again, you have to go to dungeons to get the books, the vampire books, so I'd recommend just spawning those in. Then once you have your required things, put in appropriate level of blood, you don't want to waste too high level stuff, and get your human hearts at the ready. Now each different level of ritual will require a different amount of hearts. When you activate it, power will go up to the pillar tips, and then shoot into you in this lovely little ritual. You will also be slowed, and once the laser starts firing, it will stop you from being able to jump. I'm not sure why this is designed, but it is what it is. And then you'll get a boom, and you will have advanced a level. This structure is now too weak, apparently, for us, and we need to move on to getting to level 8, which requires the solid gold structures. These also have more requirements as well, such as requiring, if we look at this little chart here, needing more hearts, one bottle, purity level 2. We're just going to go quickly through all the levels and get this done with, and then we'll move on from there. All right, a side note. So apparently in this version of the mod, you need the actual purity of the level. You cannot get a higher purity to level up. You need the exact purity. So you need purity level two for this, which is, I think, a little irritating, but oh well. Now, something to note is once you get high enough level, those four pillars will no longer do, and you'll need an extra one, which is positioned like this. So just get ready to build that. All right, so once you have reached the maximum level, there is actually another level after that, which is a hidden level 15. I do not actually know how to get to that level, but I do know 
It involves using a vampire book on a level 5 vampire lord. Also, setting your altar up with... See that that creeper did a little spin? It's like, hey, I'm going to blow up your little example thing there. Anyways, and setting up your altar with endstone brick instead of the normal stuff and wearing a vampire cloak. But beyond that, I'm not exactly sure. I tried a few times, couldn't get. So if you figure it out, it's cool. Also, I think it's one of those secret sort of things you should figure out for yourself. Anyhow, let's move on. So this here is the blood tank. You work it around with all this gubbins here and you can get yourself one of these things. Now you can fill these up with balls of blood, but there is another way to fill them up and it is their main use and we're going to get to that. But first you require two other objects and that is this funny looking thing here which requires a diamond, the blood grinder, and over here, the blood sieve. Now you take this thing here, also kind of expensive, requires a block of quartz, but you take these things here and you put the sieve onto the next layer and you put the blood, blood grinder on top of that, then into the blood grinder, raw meat, chuck it in there and it will start grinding it up and it will fill the tank up with blood over time. So I'll slowly grind that meat into delicious, delicious blood, filter it out, and fill up your barrel. So that's how you can operate with meat in this mod. So you can sort of be like a vegan vampire. Instead of sucking blood from your victims, you can just murder the cows and then use their meat. I actually have no idea how that would be more kosher or more vegan. But it seems like the vegan option is just killing them normally and then draining their blood. Moving on from that, we have some of the special items you can get. So first of all, we have blood infused ingot, and that is pure blood of any level but five in around this, and it will get you three iron. Now, if you want to make enhanced infused blood, you need to use level five pure blood, and this will give you the super stuff. Now these items can be used to make yourself a heart seeker and a heart striker which are two magical swords which are rather confusing they're using they're very slow they don't seem to do much damage for the expense that they take now that's because they need to actually be charged up to charge one of these suckers you need to make the blood pestle made with obsidian gold wood and a bottle full of blood now you Slap one of these suckers down on top of a filled up tank or just a tank that's mildly full. And you take your heart seeker, you drop it in there, and it will start charging up the blood seeker. And see, it's gotten some charge now. And that makes it deal way more damage than it was doing beforehand. That is true with all of these swords. The heart striker, which is ultimate enhanced, I actually don't know how to get the ultimate, but you take these suckers out, they'll charge them up, make them do more damage. Now the training is the more you use them, the faster they strike. Because they've actually got, as you can see, a really, really slow time to come up again. Like, the sword isn't even rising up ready for a recharge yet. Like, look how slow it comes up. So once you train with them, then you can start striking faster with them. So you need to start hitting targets and dealing damage. Anyways, moving on, we've got the vampire cloak. Now, I actually have no idea what it does, but I'm pretty certain it is involved in leveling up. Also, it can look a little swanky. Gives you a cape to wear on your back. So, it can give you that. And I think it's involved in gaining to level 15. But besides that, not really certain the point of it. Now, there's one other thing that's very key to vampires that I haven't really covered yet. And that is conquering a village. Now to do this, first you need to go to a town. And every single village, or almost every single village, will have one of these structures right here. Now if it doesn't have one of those structures, you can actually craft them. And the recipe, while not cheap, is doable. It just requires obsidian and iron wood. And then you can get the two halves to one of these beacons. And when you put it down, 
it will activate and should work for the nearby village. However, going back to this village here, we're going to look at the next step in vampirism, which is conquering villages. Now to conquer a village, you walk over to one of these things when you're a vampire, and you right click on it. Now I'll say the village is under attack by vampires, you summon your vampire brethren. This pillar will turn purple, and the villager capturing will start to proceed. All right, well, there is villagers in here, and they have come to arms. So there, we've got the one case of the villagers in this whole entire damn village coming to arms. So while the village capture is in process, you need to stay near the beacon. And as you saw with that one guy, some of the villagers will grab pitchforks and try to fight back. Others will not. Now, the village capture progression will continue to a certain point until guardians of the village will show up. So you will now see there are defenders of this village. This or there should be, however this village actually had no defenders. So now it's just straight up captured by vampires and has turned into a vampire village. Subjugating all these villagers to vampirism. This is a vampire forest now, as you can see from the fog. Now, some of the villagers will turn into vampires, while others of the villagers will become vampire experts of the evil variety. And slowly the whole village will get converted to vampires, and vampires will start moving in. As you can see, this guy's, these guys have all become vampires, the little purple effects around them. So they now serve our purposes and will be helpful. This guy actually gives us blood purity, so if we want to trade with him, we can get that to get all the blood purity we want. And now he'll give us higher purities, sells coffins, and eventually you can trade with him to get all sorts of manner of things, hopefully including blood bottles and the likes. So seek out vampire experts and turn them into vampires. And that is about it for vampirism. Now there is one more thing to cover though for the vampire half of things before we get to the hunters in the other video. If you want to stop being a vampire, Go into a church, usually any church will have these, and find the yourself uh, altar. Now, if you do not have a church, you can craft one of these off altars with books, vampire fangs, and wood, or a vampire book. Then, right click on the altar, and it'll ask you, do you want to revert back to being a human? If you click the yes, then it will set your vampire level to zero, and if you're not in creative mode, it will murderize you and send you back home, giving you no levels. And that is it for vampirism. So, I hope you found that useful in some manner. This mod has one of the better guidebooks I've come across. It's very straightforward, just read through it and you can learn most of it if I've missed anything. But that is basically everything you'd need to know to do vampire shenanigansing. Next time, we will cover the other half of the Vampirism mod, which involves fun needle chairs and murdering vampires instead of being them, and that is the Vampire Hunters. So I hope you will catch that when that comes out. It should be pretty quick here, and I will see you all then. So, until then, thank you all for watching, and goodbye.